Sarah Watterson was in her junior year at Rice University. It was early spring when she got the call that her grandmother had died. Now this news devastated Sarah. News of a passing loved one is always heartbreaking, no matter the circumstance. The news was especially devastating for Sarah because her grandmother and her were very close. They often emailed and texted. They even called on the phone. All the way through Sarah's college career, when things in college were difficult, either academically or socially or relationships, whatever, Sarah could count on her grandmother to talk to. When Sarah had found conversations with her parents difficult, it was grandmother that she turned to because her grandmother would listen without judgment. Now, Sarah's grandmother did not offer advice often to Sarah, but when she did, Sarah took it to heart. Now, Sarah's grandmother had a bit of an adventurous streak. She loved to travel. As a present for Sarah, her grandmother put together this great trip to go by train through the Canadian Rockies. And she thought this would be a great trip to plan for a young lady who lived in Midland and went to Houston for college. And it would also provide an ample opportunity for some good, slow conversation. Now, of course, the two would not be able to take this trip together. Sarah was devastated. The trip was something Sarah was looking forward to, no doubt. And the grief of her grandmother's death just pushed those thoughts kind of to the back of her mind. Sarah went back home for the funeral. And a few weeks later, back at school, she got a letter from her mother. And inside that, that envelope was a letter from her grandmother. Reading it, Sarah realized that grandma was sicker than people thought. But the letter asked Sarah to take their planned trip no matter what, because everything was paid for, and that trip was grandmother's last wish for Sarah. Now, Sarah planned for the summer trip, knowing it would be bittersweet. She had to go. She owed it to her grandmother, and the time had come. She was at the airport waiting for a trip to Canada. The flight couldn't have been more uneventful. Few conversations with strangers, some moments of almost tearing up, but nothing, nothing big. But that big emotional moment happened as soon as she pulled away from the train station in Canada. The tears came. She let them flow. And she reflected on how thankful she was that she had a private compartment on that train. Regaining her composure, Sarah walked through the train cars, she met wonderful people, and she began to let herself enjoy the trip. She saw it of her grandmother often, and sometimes the emotions came. Her emotions were up and down, just like the train going through the mountains. She would often think fondly of grandmother and their talks. She recalled that there was no subject out of bounds for grandma. She remembered discussions about relationships, parents, faith, work, and the world. Although Sarah knew her grandmother was a woman of strong faith, the conversations about faith came up with the same frequency as conversations about everything else. On the third night of the trip, Sarah fell asleep early in her compartment. Early in the morning, just before the sun rose, she awoke and stared out the window. Train was going through a mountain pass and the outlines of the mountains were becoming visible. The sun was playing peekaboo with the mountains and tiny whiffs of light were over the top of the mountains. Sarah's eyes were guided to one of the tall snow-capped peaks where she saw something she could not explain. Now, what Sarah saw maybe could have been explained by science. Maybe there, were, there was some physics reason that the light was reflecting. But Sarah, Sarah was not interested in scientific explanations. 
Sarah knew what she, that what she saw was meant for her. Sarah knew this vision on the mountaintop experienced in a Canadian train was meant for her. She could feel the presence. Sarah not only remembered the conversations with her grandmother about the Holy Spirit, but she remembered that these conversations often left her confused. Because she remembers that her grandmother said that this Holy Spirit is an invisible, indescribable, but is there for us. She remembered her grandmother talking about the Holy Spirit. She remembered a few talks where her grandmother talked about the Holy Spirit guiding her in ways that her grandmother could not explain to her. Sarah recalled her thoughts that, man, if some random person told her about the Holy Spirit, she would just dismiss it. However, because she loved and respected her grandmother, she could not dismiss what her grandmother told her about the Holy Spirit. When she saw the image, the vision on the mountain in the distance from the train car, she also felt that presence. Now, neither the vision nor the feeling could be explained, but yet they were so real. Sarah recalled that her grandmother said about the experiences with the Holy Spirit that they would feel real. And Sarah now understood that she shared an experience of the Holy Spirit just like her grandmother tried to explain to her. Sarah knew this was the most real experience that she would have in her life. The reassurance about her grandmother and the love that they shared was almost tangible, but yet could not be touched. This experience in the train car in Canada gave Sarah a peace she couldn't understand. So great, so desirable, so overpowering was the spiritual experience that she longed for it again. Now, after college, Sarah found, tried to find ways to connect again to the spiritual experience. She went on retreats, but none of them could compare to that experience on the Canadian train in the mountains. Eventually, the emotional experience of losing her grandmother calmed down and although the thoughts of her grandmother were very much alive. So Sarah went on with life. And after college, she accepted a job at an insurance company. Now, the company offered multiple programs to people, both government and nonprofit. And Sarah was what was called a public-facing expert. So she spent some of her time researching the products that the company offered, but she also spent time on the other side of people across from a desk and at the other side of people across from a phone. Now, she felt satisfaction with helping people with important problems, but she also felt the frustration and the futility of bureaucracy and of dealing with individuals who just maybe don't want to listen, it seems. Now, there came a point where the frustrating points kind of started to overwhelm the rewarding points of this job. And Sarah longed even more, even more for an experience like she had on this Canadian train. Sarah thought, man, this feelings of frustration of this job, they're getting to me. If only I could have another experience like I had before, that would make everything better. She kept on trying to find this significant experience. She thought if she could only have another one of these mountaintop Canadian train experiences, then she could handle the rest of life. Now, while on one of these weekend trips where she was trying to have another spiritual experience, she picked up a book on Mother Teresa. And she read about that Mother Teresa had a spiritual experience early in her life. And since that point, Mother Teresa tried to find that experience again. It provided her with some frustration. She was mad at God that she couldn't have another one. But she also let this experience influence the rest of her life and work. She let this experience become a guiding light to what she would do for the world. 
And as Sarah learned about Mother Teresa's experience, Sarah realized that she may not see any more visions on a mountain in Canada. Sarah realized still that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was working in her life. When things were going well, the Holy Spirit was there walking alongside. It was present. The Holy Spirit was present when she could elicit a smile from someone on the other side of that desk. The Holy Spirit was working on interactions in her life. But the most important thing that Sarah realized, finally, was that the Holy Spirit was there in the frustrating, aggravating, and downright depressing times of life as well. Sure, the Holy Spirit was there for the big, glorious, beautiful times. But the Holy Spirit was there sustaining her along. The presence of God was there with her through those times of frustration, those times of pain, no matter what the form. Now, realizing this, Sarah's life did not become suddenly idyllic and always happy. Uh, life before was not, you know, fluffy clouds and unicorns, and it wouldn't be now either. Yet Sarah knew that God, that the Holy Spirit would be with her through all the low points in her life and the high points. Clients and people in general still frustrated and even enraged her. But with the help of Holy Spirit, she could reflect and realize that these enraging people, these people that got under her skin, were also children of God like her. And the Holy Spirit was not only working on them, it was working with them as well. Life in many ways with this was the same, yet it was different because the presence of God was felt even more. She remembered her grandmother trying to explain all this. Now she understood it. Let's go away from Sarah's story and let's take a look at Acts. We see the disciples concerned with what's going to happen in the world. They're like, what's happening, Lord? Is, is, you know, is the kingdom going to come down? They wanted a timeline. But Jesus politely told them, you're getting no timeline. Oh, no. Jesus told them, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be witnesses, not only to your little tribe around Jerusalem, you're going to be witnesses to the entire world. Samaria, all the places where your tribe doesn't usually go. The disciples were going to be witnesses to the love and grace of God and the salvation that God had given to the world. Next, the disciples saw an amazing vision, a great vision, bigger and more amazing than anything that they had ever seen before and will ever see again. They witnessed Christ rising up to the sky. So amazing was this vision that they were all standing there looking and God had to send angels down and tell them to quit looking. Quit looking for the vision. You've got something to do. You've got work to do. You are witnesses. Go to work. You see, Sarah, Mother Teresa, and the disciples all experienced visions. They experienced God in a profound and exciting way that sustained them for the life as a witness of Christ. Now, you and I may not have any of these mountaintop experiences where we see a vision. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But I assure you that God and Christ's presence is there in your life. Maybe in big ways, but maybe in just small ways. And that sustaining love of Christ is there. Because remember, there's nothing too small for an infinite God either. And these experiences will continue to sustain us and help us grow in our faith to share God's love. And let us remember these experiences and let us look for them and continue to rely on the Holy Spirit 
on God's presence to sustain life as we share God's love. Amen.